JA Ceramics sponsors the Sarah Lomax Show on Sam Radio. Good morning everyone, it's Sarah Lomax here and this morning is especially special because I'm joined by a very, very, very special guest. Hello Sarah, I'm Nicola Sturgeon, I'm the First Minister and I'm delighted to be here on Sam Radio talking to you. I bet you didn't expect that. So um, here I'm going to tell you just a little bit about um, autism and um, don't worry about it, but I'm going to test your knowledge on what you know. Oh dear. Don't panic. (laughs) So um, obviously uh, Sam Radio was started by Paul Ross with the support of his parents, Sheila and Phil. And um, as there was a lack of opportunities um, for someone like him with autism to be a radio presenter, he decided that he would start up his own radio station. So um, this um, Sam Radio is, um, I believe, the um, first of its kind um, and I believe maybe the only one where it is compiled of people on the, sp- on the autistic spectrum and also anyone who... Um, is involved with autism so um, sometimes we have people who are parents or someone who's working with autism Mm -hmm. things so it's a little bit of like that so um, first of all I'm going to um, kind of just start out with a couple of questions Um, so do you know of anyone um, with autism who works in the Scottish Parliament? I, I know there are people with autism who work in the Scottish Parliament. I, I don't know them personally, uh-huh. uh, but you're probably about to tell me some. Um, <laughs> I don't actually know of any. No? That was a question for you. Okay, but there, there will be. I mean, I, and a couple of my colleagues in, in government actually have children who have autism. So there's a very, I, I think, a very high level of awareness and understanding of, of the challenges people with autism face and what government has to do to try to help get over those challenges. Yeah, well... Um, um, did you actually know that only 14% of autistics are in employment? I knew it was very low. If you'd asked me what the percentage was, I would probably have guessed that it was below 20. I might not have got 14 absolutely right. But that's one of the challenges we've, we face yeah. is to support more people to get into employment or, or voluntary work or, or to do whatever it is they want to do. Yeah. Because what we should be aspiring to is making sure that people have the chance to fulfil their potential no matter what their, their particular circumstances are. Yeah, because I believe that there are some people at Sam Radio um, who find that um, they get a lot of confidence from being mm-hmm. a presenter um, here. And also there's a lot of peer support around mm-hmm. here as well because um, if you come in here and you're maybe having a bit of a bad day and you come in and you just say, I'm having a really bad day, I don't know if I can actually manage, then they'll kind of be like, oh, it's fine, don't worry, don't worry, mm-hmm. it happens. And they're really quite flexible. Like Some days I don't feel like talking that much. Mm-hmm. So I'll, not I'll, today, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did very well. Yeah, sometimes I come in and I'm just like, I, I'd much rather just play loads of songs. Uh-huh. So I talk for maybe a. What's bit. your favourite song? Uh, oh, don't ask me that. <laughs> There's just, too many. You just told me off air you like Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, but I don't like one All song. Right, okay. I like mm-hmm. lots of ones. Um, I do like a range of um, things from 80s, but also modern day. Yeah. Except for rap, I don't like rap. See, you're you're too young for 80s. At least I, I was sort of. I was you know, meant to be born in the 80s. You were meant I to believe. be born. In, everybody yeah. should have been born in the 80s. It's I was the best born. Decade I was born far too late for it. But yeah, yeah. that's what I believe. I, I wasn't, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I was actually there in the 80s. <laughs> it must have been awesome. So um, the next question is actually f- um, Paul. Um, Paul, would you like to ask the question? Thanks very much. Uh, Welcome to the station, First Minister. Thank you. Um, What will the SNP do when the PIP assessment is devolved to Scotland to make it easier for people on the autistic spectrum to be assessed? Many autistic people find this very stressful and also that assessors do not understand their condition. 79% of uh, survey respondents said that the PIP assessment made their health worse because of stress or anxiety caused by the assessment. Well, we want to completely change the whole assessment process. I, I'm appalled at the stories I hear about people's experiences of going through that process. So firstly, we want to put uh, dignity and respect and understanding of the 
individual at the heart of the process. Too often, just now, I think benefits processes are about trying to deny people benefits and cut costs rather than really helping people. So we want to make it about what help people actually need. We're also not going to have private companies involved in doing these uh, assessments because we don't think you know the profit motive really should be at play here. So it's all about, as, as we get some powers, we're not getting powers over all benefits, but the ones that we do, we want to make the assessment processes easier, more streamlined and much more about the, the needs of individuals rather than the needs of the system. That's cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, <laughs> Paul, for that question. Um, so next I'd like to talk about carers. Um, my mum is actually my full-time carer, especially around this time of year, she reminds me, because she has to get the flu vaccination. Um, she complains about that for an entire day, so usually I avoid that. Oh, my arm's sore. So. I, th I think she's right. I think she should <laughs> rub it in. Yeah. Um, so, of course, carers usually feel like there is a stigma attached to them because of um, their low income and it's difficult to get work due to caring commitments. My mum would absolutely love to get back to work, mm -hmm. but um, any job she applies to expect her to be completely flexible. And, of course, if I'm having a bad day she can't just call in and say hi I'm sorry my daughter's having a bad day can I take the day off they wouldn't exactly call back and be like yeah yeah sure that's fine take a week off if you need um, so she struggled to find a job that's flexible mm. and especially like this week where um, we've had a complete disaster of um, my support workers that usually come with me one of them's off sick and there's actually nobody mm. to step in so of course if my mum was in um, work right now then she wouldn't actually be able to have brought me here and she's taken me to all of my activities this week um, so of course um, I f uh, found out that um, uh, unpaid carers save the nation of equivalent amounts to the funding of the NHS mm -hmm. so um, it's, a, it's a really good question first of all I've met your mum yes. a couple of times now and she's awesome she is okay so I don't think you should give her a hard time for moaning about the flu jab <laughs> I think you should just be sympathetic. Oh, yeah. Has she had it yet this year? Uh, have you? Yes, yes she was. Okay. I, I didn't go with her this time. Well, next year, I think you should be much more sympathetic and, and go with her and make oh, her a cup of tea yeah. and, and be, you know, supportive. Yeah. Well, yeah. I went with her last time and I held her hand, so... Yeah, yeah. I knew you were really, you know, <laughs> sympathetic. But no, the, the, the thing about... You're right... The, the, the support carers give, if that wasn't there, the cost to the health service and to local services, social work services, would be billions of pounds. So all of us across society literally owe carers a massive debt of gratitude, but a massive, massive uh, financial uh, debt as well. We're trying to do a number of things to... I don't think any government can ever uh, repay what carers do fully. Yeah. But we're trying to do a number of things to help support carers. So we've we've got some new legislation that's been passed that's about trying to increase the, the advice and the support carers get. Often carers end up ill themselves because of the, the yeah. pressures of caring. So we need to make sure that the health service GPs in particular are alert to that. We've just been talking about new powers the Scottish Parliament yeah. has taken. We will soon become responsible for carers allowance. We're going to increase carers allowance in the first instance. Yeah. But over time, I think there's more we need to do to make carers allowance more flexible. Right now, as your mum and other carers will know, if you work, you very quickly lose entitlement to carers allowance. Yeah. So I think we need to integrate it more and we need to encourage employers to be more flexible. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we live in an, an age where unemployment's very low. Mm -hmm. Companies need more people to work for them. Uh, we, you know, have an ageing population. So increasingly employers have to think about how they you know organize their their work to make it more possible for people to yeah. work flexibly now that's i know that's quite challenging and i know that takes time but you know i'm sure your mum even working flexibly for an employer would yeah. contribute so much that it would be well worth an employer's uh, you know benefit to say well we'll, we'll employ your mum even if she does need the odd day off when sarah's you yeah. know decided not to be sympathetic about her flu jag <laughs> Luckily, it's only once a year. <laughs> um, so while we're on the subject of um, uh, support workers, I thought I would just kind of shift this about. Um, this is worse than being interviewed by uh, Paxman. You know, it's more more challenging. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. 
You do. It's a compliment. I think you're oh, a great okay, interviewer. Well, that's good. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't detect that there. <laughs> that's my fault. My tone was obviously wrong. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so of course, while we're on the um, subject of support workers, um, obviously, um, I am getting support, and I've got a team of support workers. So I could have about maybe five or so. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I've found is. Um, there seems to be a huge group of people that come in at one time and then just as quickly as they've come in they kind of decide that it's maybe not for them or that the pay is not enough. Um, One thing I'd actually like to mention is that my sister, the one that you FaceTimed in Australia, um, she actually worked as a barista in Marks and Spencers Mm. making coffee, serving lunches Mm -hmm. and I'm obviously not dissing that job at all. She actually got paid more Mm -hmm. to serve coffees than my support workers get paid per hour and of course they are dealing with people who obviously have autism. Um, Autism isn't exactly predictable sometimes. I could be having the most fantastic day possible and then someone might bump into me or I might drop something and I could easily just turn into this gremlin in a way and it could easily just become a bad day. Mm-hmm. And of course that sport worker has to try and convince me to keep going yeah. and so it's quite a lot of um, stress on them and usually quite a lot of them decide that it's maybe not actually for them and they leave. And of course people with autism don't like change mm-hmm. so it's quite a lot to cope with if people keep coming in and going out. Um, and um, I've actually spoken to quite a few um, people and they've a- I've actually said, can you keep staying here and support me? And they say, I really wish I could, but this isn't a forever job. I can't afford to be in this job forever. So it's really quite stressful to yeah. see people coming and going. Yeah, no, I think this is one of the things that... I'm not going to pretend to you there's an easy solution to this, but traditionally... Uh, and, and Scotland's not alone here. All countries have undervalued yeah. caring work. And partly because, and this is changing, but changing slowly, partly because a lot of the caring work in our society is actually done by women. And work that's done by women has often been undervalued. Yeah. So we, we're, we're trying to start a process of changing that. One of the things we've done recently is to insist that all adult social care workers are yeah. paid the living wage. Yeah. Because sometimes it's not just that they weren't getting paid as much as a barista in Marks and Spencers. They weren't getting paid yeah. the, the wage that people say is necessary to live on. So we've introduced the, the real living wage for social yeah. care workers, which is about saying, uh, practically helping them, but also saying we really value the work you do. Now, there's more we need to do yeah. uh, because what we, we want to get to is a point where we value that kind of work yeah. really highly because it's probably some of the most important work uh-huh. that anybody will do in our society and it's important for all of us but it's important particularly for, for somebody like you who relies yeah. so much on that uh-huh. support and wants to build a relationship with the people that that is supporting you. Yeah, but it also feels like it's got to the point where they're actually... Um, I, I believe that there's actually not that many qualifications to actually get into the mm. job as well. So usually you'll um, you'll meet a range of people yeah. who are really into the job, but the pay's not enough. But you'll actually get some people who um, don't quite understand mm-hmm. what they're doing. And usually um, it can be quite difficult mm-hmm. to be looked after by someone who actually doesn't really understand yeah. autism. I mean, there is a compulsory autism um, training, but sometimes some people don't actually understand it and they kind of view mm-hmm. it more as just like, yeah. um, t- they'll take me somewhere and then they'll drop me off and then they get paid. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's actually quite easy. Um, uh, my mum actually was at, um, just looking for jobs and so many support worker things came up and there's not actually that many requirements. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, no, these are good points. And, you know, it's, it's all about making sure that we've got, as, yeah. as most do, mo- most people who work in this field are, do a fantastic job. But we need to make sure it's, a, it's seen as a professional job, that people are properly trained and properly paid and rewarded for what they do. Yeah. Um, so another thing I'd like to talk about, mm. um, it's another it's another organisation that me and my mum are involved in. Um, it's called SWAN, the Scottish Women's um, Autism Network. Um, have you heard of them? Uh, I you've you told me about it the last time we met. Yes. Um, so yes, I, I have, and I've I've looked into them a little bit to to find out a bit more. Yeah. Well, um, they've got a um, they have got a Facebook page. Um, everyone involved with Swan has autism, including um, the founders. 
um, it's just another organisation where peer support is at its best. Um, they support autistic people, they mentor each other, and it's a really unique service. Um, Dr Katrina Stewart of Swan says that mainstream education is often not the best place for young people with autism, no matter how able they are. There's a lack of specialist training and teachers and mental health consultants are often not well equipped to support them. They're bullied and marginalised and sense and environment is very challenging. Um, of course, I know this because I went to mainstream school and I was actually bullied to the point where I, um, I didn't even go to class. Mm-hmm. I would um, just kind of go to a support base and do my work there. And on top of it, we did put in a... Um, back at uh, um, that time, they didn't really understand autism too much. Mm-hmm. But we put in a su- um, support plan where I could ask to take a time out. Of course, not all the teachers got the message. Um, of course, I was labelled as a naughty child when I was little. Um, and so I actually was kind of like, well, do you know what? They already think I'm mm-hmm. naughty. Yeah. So I actually used to play up in class to the point where I'd basically get sent outside so I could basically take the time out that I was entitled to. Yeah. Um, and of course, it's getting a lot better, but um, sometimes there's not support in um, in schools. Mm-hmm. And while we may appear abled, there's loads of things that you don't think about, like the lights buzzing or the lights being too bright. Yeah. I used to fall asleep under the lights because of sensory problems. Yeah. So um, it's kind of a mixture of things. It is. It's a big, it's a big issue for us. I mean, there will be some young people for whom mainstream schooling, no matter how good it is, is never going to be appropriate. And we've got to make sure we provide for that. But your kind of experience, for me, that says we've got to change mainstream education so that it is appropriate for you rather than just assuming that we will remove young people from mainstream schools. Actually, the, the Deputy First Minister, who's... The Education Secretary, I think, is making a, a statement in Parliament this week or I uh-huh. think it is this week or, or next week about this and talking about what more needs to be done to support people in mainstream school. Yeah. We had a, 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 the, the whole cabinet uh, government had a presentation uh, a few months ago, actually, from a group of uh, autistic young people about yeah. some of the challenges they face, not, not just in school, but particularly in school around exactly what you're talking about, some of the yeah. sensory experiences they have, the environment they're in. And some of it, you know, some of it sounds to me as if if people just think about it mm-hmm. and factor it in a bit more, it shouldn't be impossible to to make right. So I think we've got a choice. We either say, well, you know, young people with autism, we're not going to try and make mainstream school work for them. But I think that would be wrong. It's it's not you that should have to adapt. It's, yeah. it's the education system that should have to adapt to accommodate yeah. you. And that's what we want to try and make sure happens. Yeah. So um, do you know um, how autism can affect families um, as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I as I say, I, I have some colleagues who have autistic children. I, I know people in my, my own life who have uh, children or relatives who are autistic. I think the one thing, and you have much more experience of this than I do, but one of the things that is obvious to me is that it doesn't affect every family in the same yeah. way because autistic people are all individuals. They all have yeah. their own uh, particular needs and circumstances. But it can be very difficult for families to, to plan and to live uh, you know, the, the kind of lives that the rest of us do. Yeah. Things can be very unpredictable. I, I think yeah. you've reflected some of that and what you've said today obviously the 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 practical challenges for families yeah. you've talked a lot about your mum and the the great uh, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the great work your mum does yeah. you've kind of moaned about her but I know I know how much you appreciate what your mum does of for course. you of course yeah and but you, the impact that then has on your mum's ability to work so the yeah. the effect on families is, is quite wide ranging and again we need to be thinking about how we help support families in a whole range of different yeah. ways because of course I do, I do actually understand how much my mum does. I know for you me. do. I'm only teasing you. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't detect that either. But, but we all, we all kind of, you know, yeah. slag off our mums. Well, I do too. Yeah. Well, um, my mum obviously has done a lot for me over the years, yeah. including um, my sisters have actually sort of, in a way, they've sort of maybe missed out a, yeah. a little bit in some ways because I've required quite a bit of support. Um, one of my sisters, um, the one in Australia, she, I find that maybe she had to grow up a tiny mm-hmm. bit faster because she had to yeah. look after me and basically almost push people away f- um, from me that were trying to tease me. Yeah. And so she actually took on the role of looking after me. Um, 
and she's a year and a half younger than me so yeah um sometimes siblings will end up um sort of looking yeah. helping look after uh, and i know for a fact that my sisters um do um in, enjoy um knowing me and being related to me and stuff but sometimes they can get quite frustrated yeah, has, about exactly uh, but but i'm pretty sure if uh, if i was to ask your mum right now or your sisters yeah they wouldn't change anything about you because you give them so much yeah probably more than they feel they give you so yeah well i wouldn't but i think anyway. what you're saying <laughs> i think what you're saying is right that yeah. you know the the implications for siblings and for parents is something we should always think about yeah well, that's been um, very interesting chat, hasn't it? But I think it's time to have that girly chat that I promised The one you promised you. me? Yes, the one I promised months ago. Excellent. Um, so, of course, if you'd like to flip over or you just want to be oh. quizzed. Well, you see, Sarah, you know how I'm quite a bit older than you? Are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on right now. So okay, well, I'm, I'm okay now then. at this age where I can't read a single word that's on that page without my glasses. It's terrible. I'm, at the, I'm there, that's why I'm mm. wearing glasses. Yeah, but you've had the good sense to wear your glasses. I've left mine in the car. Oh. So you have to read the questions out to me. Okay, so the first question is, um, what was the last thing you watched on TV and why did you choose to watch it? You didn't it? tell me there were going to be questions that I was forced to give embarrassing answers to. Well, this is not embarrassing, actually. I'm proud of this. It's not Love Island, is it? It's not. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Um, I've heard of it, but I, don't, I genuinely <laughs> don't know what it is. Oh. The last thing I watched was when I got home last night, I watched the tailor. I didn't get to see it all because I wasn't home in time, but I watched the, the last bit of River City. Oh. I like River City. It's a great soap, great acting, great writing. I think I've been recommended to watch You should that. watch River City. Okay. Much better good. than EastEnders or Coronation Street. Oh, I don't watch those. My mum my mum watched Coronation Street. Did your mum watch River City? I'm looking at her. No? No. Well, she sh- I'm she recommending it. Except when okay. she when she turns Coronation Street on, I run upstairs. <laughs> Maybe that's why she does it. <laughs> get some peace for a while. Probably. Um, so the next question is, um, if you order a takeaway, do you <laughs> go under a pseudonym? So, um, you know, if... <laughs> um, no um, <laughs> this is embarrassing as well the takeaway companies close to my house have kind of got to know me <laughs> for the years probably because I use them so much but if I'm wanting to do uh, order something where I don't use my own name uh-huh. I use my husband's name oh. because we don't have the same name so uh, so quite often I'll use his name if I'm ordering things online or whatever but the, the takeaway companies round about my house in fact the embarrassing thing is the the, the uh, Chinese takeaway that I use quite a lot near my home when they answer the phone and I say hello they know it's me <laughs> straight away so I should probably eat less takeaway. I, will, I um, used to walk into my local Chinese and I'd go in and say hi and they would say is it the usual? Yeah that's kind of like where I am. <laughs> Good to know I'm not the only one then. Mm-hmm. Um, if you could vi- invite anyone um, in all time to dinner who would it be and why? Oh uh what would I, who would I invite? I'd invite uh, Robert Burns. Oh, he's cool. Nelson Mandela. He's cool. Hillary Clinton. Uh, I don't think I know her. She was, well, she was one that got beaten by Donald Trump. Oh. So I'd, I'd be a shoulder to cry on, maybe. Um, oh. Who else would I invite? You and Paul, obviously. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Can we order Chinese? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you wouldn't want me, you, you absolutely wouldn't want me to cook, so we'd probably have to order it. Oh, in. that's okay. I, can't um, I would invite some of my favourite authors because I love books, and this is getting to be quite a big dinner party now, so I probably should stop there. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> so yeah, that, those kind of people. That sounds good. Um, so this question is one that kind of divides the nation, and um, don't worry, we can still be friends regardless of your answer. Promise. Yeah, promise. Okay. Pineapple on pizza, yay or nay? Nay. What? <laughs> you said we could still be friends and the look in your face just now is yeah, one of I complete horror. You, I expected you to say yes. Pineapple, I just, I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm not one of these people that thinks savoury and sweet should go together. Then know? why do you put tomato sauce? Tomo- tomato tomato is sauce a fruit. is not... So why do you put tomato jam on Toma- it? Look, I'm sorry, but tomato sauce is not <laughs> a sweet item. It's savoury. It it's not. Oh, Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure about this anymore. I, I just think we're too <laughs> incompatible here. I just pineapple on pizza. I mean, come on! It's amazing. That's what I had for dinner yesterday. 
Well, you know, it takes all sorts, Sarah. It takes mm, all sorts. Probably. So, um, when you were little, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, I wanted. I had two things I wanted to be. Um, I wanted to either be a lawyer, uh huh, or I wanted to write children's books. So I did become a lawyer. Yeah. And I've still not written a children's book. So maybe one day still I'll get round that to that. You can still do that. Yeah. No, I, I, I've got a bit of an ambition. Yeah, I yeah. could help. You could help me. Okay. Yeah. We could uh, have a collaboration. Yeah, sounds good. All right, we'll, we'll bear that in mind. Yeah. Do you know what I wanted to be? What? I wanted to be an actress. Really? And, yeah, mm-hmm. and I actually went to college and studied drama, so oh, there you go. I'm a qualified actress. Excellent. Well, you know, I always think um, any kind of performance, what you're doing just now is a performance, yeah. and so, you know, that's all, it's all in the same vein. Yeah. Well, it's voice acting, yeah. in a way, and I, I wanted to be a voice mm-hmm. Um, actor, so that no one can ever see the expressions that I'm pulling or anything. Well, you know, I have to say that expression you pulled when I said no to pineapple on pizza was something else. That's almost broke my heart there, actually. <laughs> pineapple on pizza does belong. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so, um, what's the funniest thing that's happened to you recently? Oh, uh, the funny things happen to me all the time in my job. It's usually quite difficult to remember. I was at a an event in Dundee on Monday this week and it was an event full of babies it was for what's called the family (laughs) nurse partnership and I was holding all these babies and I I picked up this very tiny baby and did do what you do with babies I kind of held it up to sort of and it you know what oh so everybody laughed I didn't laugh I, I got off quite lightly actually it wasn't too bad um yeah, I remember when we were at Whale Arts and you picked up that baby and I was standing up at the top of the That's hill right, and we were yeah. like, oh no, please you don't. You thought I was going to drop it? No, <laughs> no. We, we were like... You did that day. No, right? we weren't. We were like, oh, please don't puke. Please That's don't right, because I did the same thing to that <laughs> yeah. baby that day. Well, this little baby, it wasn't too bad. I'm slightly exaggerating. It was just a little bit of kind of milky, you know. Just like ordinary babies. Yeah. That's why I don't pick babies up. Yeah, it's quite wise. But then, yeah, nice, nice to cuddle a baby. Yeah, so um, that's uh, my questions. Is there anything you want to ask me? Oh, the tables are turning. <laughs> what can I ask you? Uh, uh, what can I ask you? So what's the funniest thing that's happened to you recently? Um, well, I was, in, I was in my room and um, I was bending down and I stood up and I waxed my head on the wardrobe. That's and nice I had this funny looking bump on my head yeah. and because I was feeling so clumsy later on um, I was walking up the stairs and I tripped up and usually when someone hears a loud thump on the floor they usually shout, are you okay? Nobody asked me if I was okay so I just ended up shouting, yeah I'm fine I'm fine, thank you Nobody, nobody checked. I don't know and I've been saying your mum's awesome and yeah, she didn't even check you were okay when you fell up the stairs. Yeah, well, I'll, I, I'll have I a word with her later. I don't know if maybe it's the fact that they're used to it because I'm maybe. just so disaster prone that they're kind of used to hearing um, <laughs> something falling. So my, my other question is, what is your favourite pizza? Don't say pineapple, please. Hawaiian. Don't. Hawaiian's got pineapple on it. That's the idea. Right, okay. So what, what other kind of strange weird, freaky, sort of savoury, sweet combinations of food do you like? Um, I am absolutely crazy for barbecue sauce. Love but that's it. not the same. Yes, it is. I like barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce is actually made of, like, tomatoes with loads of, like... Um, tomato is... I know, like, I know you're technically right, OK, but tomato's not a fruit in the same way a pineapple yeah. is a fruit. Oh. Um, yeah, my mum made um, me toasties. I like cheese toasties with honey on it. Cheese and honey? Yes. Yeah. I have a very strange now, um, I know we're on radio, but if people could see the look on my face right now. <laughs> well, um, I guess also the fact is that by my love of barbecue sauce, I will actually eat it with anything. All right. Anything at all. I quite like cheese and sort of chutney or cheese and pickle toasties, but not honey. But it's awesome. Paul, are you listening into this? Mm-hmm. What are you making of this pineapple? Are you like pineapple and pizza, yay or nay? Uh, nay. Um, probably ah, not, no. we yeah. have the majority. Is there anyone in here? Raise your hands. Pineapple, yay or nay? Two. Two. Yeah. Okay. Two. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. There we go. I think oh, it's three. I think it's split. Okay, three. It's a, it's so, okay, so I guess um, that we're going to decide that the overall winner, because it's my show, then it means I win. Yeah. <laughs> This girl's going to be first minister one day. Hmm. Do I have to do anything responsible? 
<laughs> well, occasionally, yeah. Oh. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but no once thanks, or twice then. a day, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I, would you really want me to be like a first minister or yeah. something? Right, the first thing that well, I will what make... What was the first thing you would do? What's the first route Make it law mandatory you that all pizza is served with pineapple. <laughs> okay. Told you. Right, okay, maybe it's not such a good idea. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm just changing my mind. I think oh. you... I was, yeah. <laughs> You're too good on the radio. Yeah, I suppose. So, yeah. That was a good girly chat. It was very good. Mm -hmm. So I hope that you've learned quite a few things. I have, thank you. I'm really honoured to have been invited onto the station and I have, from you in our uh, meetings so far, but also from being here today, I've learned a lot about autism and it will help me go back to government and make sure we keep doing the things that we need to do to, to make it better. And of course, if you ever want any um, advice or any information on autism or you need me to actually, you know, come in and like, you know, do a chat or anything, um, then feel free. And also, I guess you can maybe um, pass on a few cards on my um, Facebook page. It was originally evolved just to share crafting things, but it's kind of evolved into maybe a support sort of network. Mm Um, and it's called In Stitches with Asperger's and I sometimes I'll just go on there and just pretty much rant about just um, ordinary ordinary things that I will really struggle with mm-hmm. and it's amazing how many people um, don't really know about something but just a simple talk mm-hmm. like five minutes or something or in this case about half an hour it can teach people a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I would encourage I uh, looked at your Facebook page after we met the first time. That's good. And I will, I will encourage other people to do it because you're right. It's yeah. lots of people don't understand, and yeah. and sometimes the things that you'll be struggling with are quite simple things that would be a lot easier if the rest of us just thought about it. Yeah. Well, I very yeah. much. So I as long as you promise that. me that you never put a post in your blog about the merits of pineapple and pizza. I well, will. I kind of hate to break it to you, but I actually shared the Sam Radio link on my Facebook page, so anyone who's listening has probably heard the whole thing. Right, OK. I think, I think I'm going to organise a, a national referendum on <laughs> p- pineapple on pizza. Like I said, it divides yes the nation. No. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Well, the thing is, I'd be in the no campaign then. I don't know that that can work. Also, I'd be in the yes campaign. <laughs> right, we're going, yeah. Pineapple and pizza, yes or no, that will be my new campaign. Oh, okay. But we're still friends? We're still friends. That sounds good. So, um, of course, everyone, thank you so much for listening. And, yes, please give my Facebook page a like. It's In Stitches with Asperger's. And um, this has been the Sarah Lomax Show. So thank you so much, Nicola, Thank you. It's co- been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. So, everyone, um, have a really good day. And I will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Sponsors the Sarah Lomax Show on Sam Radio.